let him go! Hey, look at that beautiful fish. <laughs> Afraid of Fishing Adventures took us right there. Yeah, baby! Stay tuned for some more of these. Halle Bucks! <laughs> Halle Bucks! Hey guys, Scott from Realistic Outdoors. We're on a wicked adventure up in the Williston watershed. We're going to be after some grayling for sure, and we're going to try our hardest to find some uh, bull trout. I think they've already moved up, so we're going to have to do some serious hunting. Stay tuned, I know you're going to enjoy it. There are times when leaving your comfort zone is a good thing. This trip turned out to be a great example for us. The fish had moved up early and we missed them, in all our usual areas. No worries. Armed with our Garmin GPS, we set out to find more. We had no fears heading off trails and finding some beautiful areas and some amazing fishing. Sure, it was a lot more work. We had to do a lot of bushwhacking. A lot of walking down creeks, climbing over mountain sides, but what we found made it worth every second. So I have to say, sometimes getting out of your comfort zone is a good thing. This trip reminds me of one of the most misinterpreted poems ever written by Robert Frost in 1916. In his poem he mentions taking the path less traveled. Unfortunately the poem means not to dwell on the road you didn't choose. It does not mean the path less traveled will be a better choice at all. The what ifs, would it have been better or worse if I went the other way? Though when it comes to finding new fishing spots, I believe that you should always look for the path less traveled. There's no wrong turns. There's just different paths and different destinations. These trips are never just about the fish. They're about being outside, making new friendships, and finding yourself. I think you cleaned her out, there's Scott. One. You're on. Yeah, there's one. Whoa! Oh, that's a nice rainbow. Beautiful. That was a four foot jump there. I think he's got another jump in him. Oh yeah, he's just, just shaking that. It's a rainbow. Yeah, that's a nice rainbow. Here we go. Look at that pretty rainbow. Holy smokes. Wow. That is, that is a great rainbow and he's not happy about that very much. Uh, okay, okay. Thanks for the jump. Let's get your fly. Wow, that's a thick fish. Yeah. I could tell it was a big fish when he jumped. Okay, the fly is out, and I think I hooked the net. Oh, hooked into him again. Oh, he really wanted that fly. Jumped out of the net, unhooked him, hooked himself again. Uh, 
Okay, get back in the water here. Get my gun out of the way. Get a quick shot of that. Hopefully we can see this. So I can get him back in the water. Oh, point my net. <laughs> Look at the colors on this wild rainbow. Up north, British Columbia. Let's go. Let's get him back in the water. Boom. The red on that fish was I saw incredible. It. I can tell as soon as he come out of the water, it's definitely a rainbow. I like that is one rosy, rosy trout. So uh, we just walked two kilometers down a creek. Joel and I did a little exploring. We came out on this beauty of a pool. Today I'm going to try my Beulah five weight switch rod and a fly that uh, Joel tied up last night in the trailer in the dark, half asleep. We're going to call it the trailer trash. Wish us luck. Let's get it in there. I don't think my fly is getting down very far. That's a heavy fly. That's heavier than John, so. Fish, Fish on. on. Nice, man. Oh yeah, nice bully. Nice little bull trout. Woo! Try and get him out of the pool, up into this river here, so we can keep him clean. Not a big one. That's a fair one. That's a fair size bully. It's just a couple pounder here. Let's bring him up into this corner there. You want to just watch your shadow too. Come closer this way. There we go. All right. So, there's our nice little corner. Nice bully, man. Nice corner hook. Beauty color. Come, come right in close. As close as you can get for a full shot of this. Uh, it's really good here, Scott. Okay, man. Yeah. All right. Let's, really uh, good. Let's let him breathe a little bit. This water is very, very, very cold. <laughs> and uh, that was that was like the third cast. Here we go. Oh, wrong way, buddy. <laughs> wrong way. There you go. There he goes. Look at him shoot off into that pool. Awesome, man. So. Already it was worth the extra effort that Joel and I made coming up in here. Like, you know, it was a good hour walk down massive boulders to come through this creek to get to this pool. And a uh, little shout out to our friend John, we just met, who gave us a little heads up on that. Thanks, John. Um, because without you, uh, we were only doing a grailing video. <laughs> so anyway, uh, there it is. The trailer trash. First couple gas, bully on. I think it's your turn, Joel. What do you think? I'm down. You're down? <laughs> Let's yeah, do I'm it. Ready, yeah. All right. So, uh, Scott just pulled in that beauty small, smaller uh, bully. So, I did a version very similar to uh, an Arctic grayling um, imitation. So, uh, single hook with a kicker articulation tail basically a, a derivative or variant of a of a double deceiver with mask so we we waited this a little extra to get down in this pool here so let's get to it nice fire in All hooked up. This is a really nice fish.
Oh, he's strong. First cast. Well, I don't know. When you let your uh, line just soak in the water for half an hour, it doesn't count as one cast. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, bud. <laughs> Love you. <ya. laughs> yeah. Kisses, bro. <laughs> this is a pretty big fish, dude. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. No chance He's you can get. Definitely over five for sure. No chance you can get him out of that pool. I don't want to try and yank him out, man. I gotta. As long as he's using the current, he's gonna win. Wonder if even you went to the other side. Yeah. That well, looks. Well, the, the actual the fish are hanging here. Oh, okay, yeah. So right. it's best that I have them here right now. Okay. I haven't came up with uh, with a name for it, but. Once we see this trout, maybe we'll name it. Oh man, he's just, just head shaking. See, uh, I have a net for sale, by the way. <laughs> oh yeah, you didn't bring it. For those of you who uh, don't know me from Adam, uh, I have a net that when it comes with me, we don't catch fish every time. We had three days of no bull trout. We left the net at the, at the camp and two casts, two bull trout. So if you're watching from home, that net's for sale. Uh, lately used. <laughs> Here he comes. Look at that. Just beautiful. He devoured that fly. Just beautiful. Oh. Man, he's heavy. Just opening his mouth and breaking me. Yeah, you are right under the shore and you'd be laughing. I'm not losing him. Yeah, there you go. Beautiful. All right, hold that guy up for if you can. Look at that. Here we go. Beautiful. That is a sweet fish. Look at the colors. See so you can get the spots in the pink. Look at that. Just glorious. Nice fish, brother. Thank you, sir. He's ready to go. Off, off he goes. 100 miles an hour. So. Are we naming this fly? Let's call it the Grizz. I was going to call it Lucky Trailer. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky Trailer, let's do it. Lucky Trailer, good awesome. Grizz, brother. Thanks, man. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, let's do it again. Let's do it again. All right. Got another one on. Joel's up a little higher. I've seen them starting to feed down here, so I just moved down a little bit. Looks like a nice one. Looks like a really nice one. Yeah, you know, the grayling in this system are endangered and they're on the protected list. So it's catch and release only. But that's still a lot of fun. And these fish are just beautiful. Gorgeous fish, just gorgeous fish. They have to be one of my absolute all-time favorites. Cooked right in the corner, just a oh, beautiful male. Let's have a look at that. That's just a gorgeous, gorgeous male right there. Let's just have a quick peek at him and get him back in the water. That is a really nice grayling. Hooked right in the corner, a barbless hook. Look at that. What a gorgeous fish. That is incredible. Let's get him back in the water. And off he goes. Just the blue in the sail fin, when they're excited like that, is just, and I can still see the blue. They're just incredible. Just incredible. When you hold them up, 
hold them up high so I can zoom in on your on yourself or right over the net, whatever. This is a really nice male. So what'd you catch that on? Uh an ant. parachute ant. Parachute ant. Hmm. Yeah. They weren't taking they slowed right down. Oh, this fish is tagged. What? That's uh It's a tagged fish. We need to get the ID and everything. Well, I thought it was a male. I think it's a female. I've never seen a tagged grayling before. Yeah, it's tagged. There's a tag right there. Yeah. Can we get the number off of it? I'm going to put this on on the tag fish. Do we want an approximate measurement or anything? Or you think they'll care? No. I'd rather get the fish back. Yeah. You know how big it was in the net. Tag fish. Tag fish. Fish in here my whole life. You come once and you get a tag fish. That's Lucky awesome. Lucky bugger. Yeah. We'll call that number in and hopefully we'll add that information um, on the camera about what, uh, how old that fish is when it was yeah. stocked. I'd say it was approximately 15 inches or so. And where did it get stocked from? That's going to be the cool part. So exactly. We'll know where it came from. Maybe it got stocked down in the in the main river and yeah, yeah. Cool Sweet. man. Awesome. Sweet. I was here. Pow. Good job. I tracked down the info on the tag, and I was lucky enough to be given the opportunity to head out with these gentlemen to find out more. What is it you're doing, and what do you hope to accomplish? We're putting acoustic tags in a few grayling. That way we have hydrophones all over the watershed. If everything goes well, these fish will migrate all over the watershed. Those tags will ping, and then we'll be able to map everywhere that these grayling have traveled. That will tell us where they're going first. Uh, that way we can uh, determine what interactions they're having with other species and what areas might be critical habitat during spawning, feeding, and overwintering. So what we'll do is we'll get one of these out of the bag. Ian will have it immobilized with his electric gloves. Uh, then we'll do the length, the weight, we'll do an adipose clip and a muscle punch for stable isotope analysis. And then we're going to flip them over, uh, we'll make the incision, we'll implant a pit tag, a passive integrator transponder pit tag, and then we're going to put an acoustic transmitting tag in there. We'll suture him up, we'll get him in one of these recovery bags, a few minutes and he's good to go. If you'd like to find out about this and other programs, please check out Fish and Wildlife Compensation Program, www.fwcp.ca. Dude! I barely fits in this net! That is freaking huge! Ooh, oh. Actually, a little higher, a little higher. Boom! Oh, it looks like I got another grilling on. Last of the evening, probably. Starting to get dark. Hopefully you guys can see. Yeah. I got a decent one on here. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's a pretty fish right there. That's the biggest one I think I've caught. Oh, nice. Yeah. Can you just have a quick look and make sure I'm in frame here? You might have to lean oh, it down. Yeah, sure. You can see all of it? Down, yeah. Let's get this. Look at the size of this oh, one. Oh, wow, man. It's I, huge. I can't believe that is that is the biggest one I've caught here. How big is that compared to this net? Goes. Oh, that's, that's an easy 16, 17. All right. I would say. Let's get, Let's get him out of here. Let's get him going. He's ready. All right. Oh, I love when they just sit there. 
Like grayling really take a rest. Oh, now see how blue his... Yeah, now that's how you can tell it's a male. Because he's got those blue dots. He likes you. And uh, it's very pronounced on that back edge of that dorsal. Grayling will take their time to uh, to recover. They don't always shoot off, but they'll... There he goes. That's awesome, man. Sweet. Right on! <laughs> Well, it might be a little too early to celebrate, but it was a pretty wicked trip. My friend Joe Roy from Lazy R Streamer Co., he joined me today and he's packing up for us already. Uh, we had a wicked time. We caught a lot of grayling, which you're going to see, and a couple bonus uh, bull trout. So I appreciate you guys hanging around and thanks for tuning in. I'm Scott from Real Estate Outdoors saying uh, maybe catch a sailfish from the freshwater once in a while. If you're interested in finding out more fun stuff about Realistic Outdoors or you're interested in becoming a sponsor, you can check us out on one of our social media pages. If you're a guide or a lodge wishing to showcase your services on Realistic Outdoors, shoot us a message. We'd love to hear from you. If you want more information on how to contact any of our sponsors, please drop us a line.